Hi, and welcome to the Parkinson's Disease Education Podcast. I'm happy to bring you this first episode. In case you don't know me already, my name is Michael Heil, and I'm a doctor of physical therapy and Parkinson's expert. And I have just started this inaugural podcast on YouTube. We have another podcast called the Parkinson's Warriors Podcast that's not on YouTube. This is our first attempt at a YouTube podcast. So I'd love to keep this going and um, and make this an even better experience for you with the simulcast doing the video as well as the audio. Anyway, enough of that. We're going to get into what Parkinson's is and why it's important to know and all that in, that entails. And I say all that that entails, but it would be like trying to drink the ocean to talk about Parkinson's disease in one episode of a podcast. So I'm not going to do that. But I am going to talk to you about some of the basics and try to give you at least a bite-sized understanding of what PD is and uh, why it affects the body systems that it does. So diving right in, let's try to take five minutes or less and talk about that right now. So disease-wise or pathology-wise, Parkinson's disease lives in a very particular area of the brain. Uh, there are, are a group of neurons that produce, uh, the largest group of neurons that produce dopamine are a, a group of basal ganglia cells called, uh, or found in an area called the substantia nigra pars compacta, which basically means black stuff in a tight wad. <laughs> um, it's, um, that's actually pretty much literally what it means in Latin, by the way. <laughs> Uh, so I love that. But um, anyway, the, those cells turn dark when dyed um, a certain color, uh, particularly in uh, you know, cross-sectional studies where they've cut things open, looked at those cells in autopsy. Um, when they turn black, that indicates that the cells are there and they're healthy. And in Parkinson's individuals, there's hardly any black cells left once they, the dye has been, uh, once they've been expi- exposed to that dye. So that's why it's called the way, uh, what it's called. But that being said, the dopamine producing cells are dying in Parkinson's disease and that's what's resulting in the, the um, presentation of the disease in the person. So what does dopamine do exactly? There are multiple functions of dopamine. One of which though, and one of the most important in Parkinson's disease is that it helps uh, as a neurotransmitter. And neurotransmitters as a general category are chemicals in the brain that help to make processes happen in the brain and it's a biochemical and electrochemical processes and so dopamine is a very important uh, neurotransmitter in movement control so it helps uh, it helps us to grade movements and to control movements to move as big as we want to move or as little as we want to move basically to be accurate and finite uh, or excuse me um, fine-tuned I should say Finite would be like final, but uh, we want to be, it's basically to help us fine tune movements and to control them. And so uh, when that uh, is lacking, you have an imp- a, a reduced uh, ability to move as well as you used to move. So one of the primary hallmarks physically of Parkinson's disease, of course, tremor is the first thing people normally think about, and that is a part of Parkinson's disease for at least 70% of individuals uh, is tremors. but but primarily you have a decreased muscle activation as a result of the reduction in dopamine. So with that decreased muscle activation, you get your problems with smaller movements, slower movements, balance and posture issues, gait and balance problems. Um, I think I said balance twice. Anyway, you, you get the picture. That's basically the overarching cause is a muscle activation issue. And that results in mobility limitations and um, as well as all those other impairments that can happen. Now, in addition to the physical limitations of the disease, it is a movement disorder, but it is also a disorder, a disease that affects the entire body and every body system. And that's way more complicated to go into in one episode of a podcast, but just know that that's what we're gonna be covering in this podcast is bite-sized chunks of material so that you can better understand this disease In this podcast, we're attempting to demystify the disease and to empower you as a person with Parkinson's disease to reach your true potential. So that being said, um, you also have a lot of non-motor symptoms of Parkinson's disease. So these are not movement issues. They're issues with other body systems. So in brief, 
Parkinson's disease causes direct damage to the autonomic nervous system, which is the part of our nervous system essentially that where things happen when we sleep, right? There are things that happen when we're awake or sleeping that are automatic. We don't have to think about them. They just happen. Blood pressure regulation, sexual function, digestion, uh, you know, how our body produces, uh, produces um, how our body filters out the blood and, and you, you get urine. Um, uh, the signals that our body produces to salivate, to produce tears, all of those things are automatic and don't have to happen by our control, right? Heart rate regulation and rhythm is another one. So there's a lot of different examples, but that is all affected by Parkinson's disease in a negative way. And it, it doesn't always manifest the same way in every individual. Everybody with Parkinson's is slightly different, although they share a lot of similarities. So I don't want to go any deeper into this topic today, but just know that's, that's your overview Parkinson's 101 episode of this podcast. I do hope that you'll continue to, sub, to watch, subscribe so that you can get notified of new episodes and they will be episodic. And uh, at the least, I'd like to do them weekly, if not every other week, so that you get a little bit of new material as often as we can. So thank you for watching and for listening. And I look forward to seeing you in the next episode of the Parkinson's Education Podcast.